Hello everyone in the chat, if you can let me know the audio's good, I just want to make sure everything's peaking alright and not too quiet. If it's good, then we'll get going. Welcome everyone to the live discography tier list for the Mars Volta. This was voted on by patrons. Thank you very much to everyone that voted and suggested bands to do this for. Thank you very much for everyone for being a part of it. I truly appreciate it. You see the list right here. I'm going to try to do the setup right now while you see it in the corner right now. For those of you who just came in here from some of the Mars Volta shared groups on Facebook or Reddit, or it's your first time here, my name is Luke, host of the YouTube channel Rocks. Thank you for tuning in. Now that YouTube allows us to have a little more interactivity with the chat, this is the best opportunity to do something like this. This is the first time I've done a live tier, dis tier list discography for a group on YouTube. So it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. Many of you may not be super familiar with the Mars Volta. Some of you have been there since the very beginning. I, for one, am very thankful that I've been there for the very beginning, ever since 2003. I've been along for this ride. So that being said, thank you to everyone that's tuning in right now. Hopefully you guys are all doing good. Hopefully... Everything is going well for your neck of the woods, and you have some information on the Mars Volta. If you guys have any super chats or questions you want answered, I will answer every super chat at the end of the stream. I just want to make sure everything is going and is centered around mostly the Mars Volta while we have this discussion. You might see animals peek in and out just like you were about to see one Mr. Pearl poke his head in. That is one of the good boys of the household. Hey, buddy. It's okay, Pearl. It's okay. He's a fan of the Mars Volta as well. So, hopefully you're all having a fantastic evening. one Arm Scissor Better Be Gold Tier, that's the wrong band, and boy, oh boy, that's a terrible way to start this stream. Uh, admittedly newest to the Mars Volta, but I'm totally here for it regardless. Hopefully this will point you in the right direction. So, as we are here waiting for a few more stragglers to come in, I'll have you say hi to someone. This is Pearl. He is my buddy. He loves the Mars Volta too. Hopefully you all will learn something today. For those who are not aware, the Mars Volta is a prog rock band from the ashes of At The Drive-In. Came the Mars Volta in 2003 by Cedric and Omar. So, thank you guys very much for tuning in for this one. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. This is going to be a little bit more of an informational course as well for the Mars Volta, who have seven full-length albums, including the self-titled Reunion Comeback album that just was last year going back though of the seven albums we're going to start it early and hopefully everyone else is doing well i see a heart in the chat for pearl i think that's very appropriate led by cedric and omar the mars volta were an absolutely unclassifiable act at the time where at the drive-in broke up many of the members went on to make the group strata where cedric and omar took some time to practice and write and make the Mars Volta. Everything else tier, we'll get there. I do want to point out though, this is not going to be a tier list or anything like that where everything's gold. I love the Mars Volta. I would be doing a very dis big disservice. I would say everything's gold, everything's top tier. I actually don't feel that way. I have a cat underneath my standing desk now. He is ready to go. Let's start things out with 2003. I want to make sure everyone's on the same page as this. And I'll have an album cover for what we're talking about for the Mars Volta. Deloused in the Comatorium was impossible to describe just for everyone to get really a, a handle on things. In an age where new metal was still around, but started to be a little obnoxious, and post-grunge was the same old garbage churned in and out, along came a post-hardcore band that broke up. Pearl, get out from back there, silly and turned into the Mars Volta, wildly experimental and chaotic in their writing. I've only heard Delouse and Francis. We're going to talk about Delouse right now. This was not just rock or post-hardcore. This was Prague, mixed in with jazz, with electronica, with many, many other styles built in. 
They found in a masterful, one-of-a-kind keyboardist and pianist named Ike Owens, who helped shape everything for the sell the al- the first six albums of the Mars Volta. The Mars Volta became iconic sounding because they had a dedicated pianist and keyboardist who helped shape everything else's law as well, with Cedric writing wild lyrics, sometimes cryptic, sometimes storytelling, and Omar becoming absolutely unhinged as a guitarist to make him one of the best guitarists alive. I can't believe it's been 20 years this year since that album, d Louse in the Comatorium, came out. And for those wondering, we're not going to talk about rank EPs or the live albums, the EP Tremulance and the uh, scab dates for the live album, just because we have to narrow some things down. From the first few minutes and going into Inertiatic ESP and things like that with d Loust, it became bonkers. R.I.P. Ike, absolutely. That was a loss when he passed away. When it smooths into Inertiatic with such a bombast and blast of drums crushing and guitars wailing out. And then it goes to a seven minute piece with Roulette Dares. That made me a fan. Just on that alone, hearing Roulette Dares, This is the Haunts. That's the type of album that wins me over. And then when you dive deeper, you hear something like Secretriz ESP, which is where the jazz, which is where the true long play jam session comes out. There's so much on this album that's impossible to describe and it's easier just to play for someone. YouTube, however, will not allow that. My first song was, yeah, we have a lot of first memories. I'm going to get through those too. Don't worry about that. I'll get to chat when I'm going there. I know a lot of people have memories of the Mars Volta. d Loust is such a strong introduction for a group that honestly warrants an introduction if you have never heard a song from them. This is the best introduction you can find because it definitely sets the high bar and all the success and talent of the group for a group that does so many different things. It's hard to say i count the title track for Francis the Mute. No, but you can count that with Francis the Mute because that originally was supposed to be the opener for the album. The title track just could not physically fit on the album. I have to say, as we go on and just introduction-wise, I have to put d Louse in the Comatorium in the gold tier. Now, for those of you who are interested, I'm going to try to make polls live. I don't know if they're going to let me do it, but we're going to try. Because I do feel it's important. Dun, 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 dun. D. E. Loust. Add option. So this is where it's going to take a little bit of time. Wah, wah. So, where do you think in the poll D. Louse should go? If you've heard it. D. Louse is a musical fever dream. Fever dream is a fair way to describe it. Drunk Ship of Lanterns and Relatives are probably my favorite songs on the album. I, you always hear your love for Drunk Ship of Lanterns too, which is always so much with the percussion and the wild keyboard um, back and forth with the guitars. Why don't you host your own news music streams here? Because my channel would be struck down instantly and I'd have a ton of strikes on my channel. So that's why. Fair question. And I feel D. Louse never... d Louse is not an album that's being lost in time, especially now that the Mars Volta are touring and playing again. However, it's such a hard album to describe that had zero support from radio. And almost, you can't really blame them. A seven-minute roulette dares track is too unwieldy and too long to play on FM radio. I get that. If you play Drumship of Lanterns, it's just going to confuse people. So... It's so hard and so difficult to describe a group like this. Word of mouth spread, online discussion spread. That's how it got so big. It went gold certified. It made such a big noise for a group like this. No real help from MTV, no real help from radio back when MTV was really a big market for something like this. Let's see what the poll says. You agree with my decision. 79% gold, 21% silver. I said gold for this. This one's easy for me. Happy for me too. It started with that gold standard. That's a lol cut inside joke if you know the Mars Volta. We now go on, let me see if I can pull this up, to one of my favorite ever albums of any genre, of any style, ever, ever, ever. Excuse me. Francis the Mute was bonkers. 
It was wild, completely unorthodox, chaotic. And at the time, Sony and their label, their underneath label that was owned by Sony and the executives, were absolutely terrified of what the Mars Volta were going to do because they didn't get to approve anything before it was sent in. They got one copy, one shot, that's it. Francis the Mute is a story about Jeremy Ward, the former member of the Mars Volta who passed away shortly after d came out, who was repoing cars years before that and found a half-filled journal in the back seat. Half of that story came with names and places and language filling out what we hear in Francis the Mute, the album. The other half of the story was filled out by Jeremy. This is where Cedric and Omar got together and made the story about these characters, Francis, Sigmund, Cassandra. All these people were, in storytelling wise, made this bonkers story. And it was such a long story that all the music couldn't even fit together in one album. It reached the maximum they could put on a CD at the time and actually sell. Originally, they were going to have more, but they knew they couldn't do that. They also wanted to have it be five tracks, and that's how it normally is sold and presented online in the digital format. Cassandra Gemini being over 30 minutes. Sony said, uh-uh, you're not doing that. Made it to 12 tracks, cut up pretty oddly, to say the least. It had to be done. For description's sake, so that way it wouldn't fall under EP settings as track-wise, which is always a big mess. This is where I fell in love with the Mars Volta even more. I got it the day it came out at Best Buy. I remember listening to it and being blown away when I got to Cassandra Gemini and hearing all these parts, hearing these long, loud moments with guitar that just heard Omar go ballistic and just impress me how that was even possible. Sorry, I'm going to end the poll right now. Da, 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 da. For d -Loust. And this also proved that, you know, Francis the Mute can have a single. The Widow got airplay. The Widow made the top 40. The Widow actually got the name Francis the Mute out there. I remember DJs going, that is the saddest song I've ever heard in my life at the time. For FM radio and people not understanding just how sad that story got through the whole album, Elvia got on uh, Guitar Hero. That's big. This is the second album for them to go gold and get certified gold also, two in succession. How do you describe Francis the Mute? Do you describe the bonker story? Do you describe the amazing music? Do you just start with Sigmund, the first track, which is wild and has more of that experimentation and jazz style with so many different breakdowns and sequences to build back up into what it was starting with at the beginning. It's just so much. There's a, many reasons, and I made a whole video detailing the story, the music, the creation process of Francis the Mute years ago, like within the first couple years I was doing YouTube. So, I think someone posted a version of Francis the Mute that has the title track included the co coincidences a few that condenses a few of the ambient segments, might not be around anywhere more. Yes. And those ambient segments, even with the title track, four minutes of a phone ringing, you have many parts of Miranda that goes just isn't holy, the crickets and things like that to set the ambience. I get why it's important, but I also get how so much could have been crammed into a CD if they made one of things like that. So the salsa sections of Nelvia, which is a big part of that too. Keep in mind also, this is a band that had no problem sharing their Spanish influence in the music, and it actually making big in the United States where uh, by language, by spoken songs were not exactly that popular, especially in heavy music. And it worked. And it was great. It's very easy to talk about the first two albums because I love them so much and how much I've listened to them and how much I've praised them and how much people still hold a candle for these. So... I'm going to make a poll. I won't say what I'm going to say yet, but still, I could probably figure it out. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you guys again for hanging out with me while I make this. The first time I'm doing it live. Gold, silver, bronze. Polls up for Francis the Mute if you'd like to play along. I know what I put. 
And I get why an album like this is very intimidating to jump into, not knowing where to start besides the beginning. It's hard to recommend a single, but this album made it possible while being a full prog album with a wild story. It was all a dream. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this is one of the few times where that it was all a dream trope works really well. So, thinking about Black Francis could actually be successful today. Successful? Do you mean sales wise? It's hard to say. I don't. I don't know if you'll get as much attention as it did back then because there was truly nothing like this at the time in 2005. So, I don't know. Stuff like this is made now with the advent of, you know, digital music sharing, online streaming services, at-home studios. But, yeah. It's hard to say if something like this would be as successful if released in 2023. Very difficult to say. Could it be made? Yes. Uh... Riff Rush can push French in their songs and the fans accept it. Mars Wolf can put Spanish in the fans like it too. True, but um, Rush had way more of a head start and a decades of experience behind it. To be fair, though, the Mars Volta had at the drive-in back in it with Cedric and Omar. So, also very fair. Let's check that poll. I said gold. I'm curious what you guys said. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Unanimous gold. Very nice. No argument here. This is the easy part of the discussion. We're now going to get a little bit more... Not con um, confrontational or contentious, controversial. But it is going to be more of a discussion on a lot of this. Amputecture came about a year and a half after Francis the Mute. Fall of 2006. It was a big old surprise. I myself remember being very surprised it was going to come out that fast. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting YouTube pop-ups. Now is when Amputexture was being promoted. The single Viscera Eyes was put online. No radio play, nothing like that. Because again, it was way too wild and chaotic and long to actually get an FM spot. Viscera Eyes was put on the band's website. It was shared on a few other international websites. That was the only teaser we got for the new album. I remember... In 2006, on a crappy laptop with a intermittent internet connection, it was satellite high-speed internet, so sometimes it was good, sometimes it wasn't at the time. Clicking on a website I'd never been to before just to check out the song, and hearing Viscera Eyes, and getting to that last section, and being blown away. And just feeling how much of a trip it is. And I see so much of people talking about different songs like Vermicide and things like that. Oh yeah. Let me get the album artwork for you. When I heard Tetragametron the first time, I was blown away. Oddly enough, that was a great workout song for me because I would just zone out or, re or listen to that while I was studying on the elliptical, while I was like doing things like that and working out and just had like a textbook or flashcards or something. Such a long, detailed... Story with plenty and plenty of biblical stuff with references and things like that. Amputecture is a solid follow-up to Francis, but no way could it be as good. Still a good album. Fair. And when I hear Viscera Eyes, when I talk about Tetragametron, which is, by the way, is a reference, like a the old, 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 like BC Hebrew style form of Jesus, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, Tetragametron. That's like the symbolic version. At like 2000 BC. Again, the Mars Volta does a lot of history and research with their biblical references. Like old timey. It's, by the way, happy birthday to very, the best live stream is the best present. I have to say though, the biggest memory I have for this album was hearing Day of the Baphomets. That is the most intimidating, sinister, opening few moments with the percussion and that amazing bass solo. And then just completely going off the rails with the guitar and saxophone dueling each other. Cedric going at his highest register of his voice, screaming and shouting his head off, singing all this stuff. The percussion and like the actual hand percussion going segment. And then that very end sequence where it really did feel like a Baphomet style demonic celebration 
it was chaos wrapped up beautifully in this musical package at Day of the Baphomets. This is not a perfect album. There are dry spots in it. It has so many peaks and valleys in it between songs that it's hard to really take a grasp of everything. But the high points and good sequences are so good that you can't help but admire everything they did. And so quickly. Keep in mind, Francis the Mute, 2000, spring of 2005. Amputecture, fall of 2006. Also, scab dates came out between that time too. The Mars Volta made a huge impact in a pretty quick amount of time, with very little time to do a turnaround, but they did it. I feel this is a very underappreciated album, even though it still gets a lot of praise for some of the songs. It's not nearly talked about as much as probably the most popular three. And it's a shame, and I think part of that is because it came out so quickly on the heels of Francis the Mute that people had no time to absorb this beast of an album. And this Amputecture is a wild, monstrous beast of music to take in. But it's good. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, that was a big part of that fall of 2006 going into the following year, listening to that, trying to get all these different things. It's cold-plated silver, thanks, fair enough. There are cats meowing all over the place, by the way. Just consider that part of the background music for today. Amputecture is your favorite the Mars Volta album. I don't care what anyone else says. I get it. You'll never hear me say like too much bad about it because I don't either. I don't think it's as strong as the first two. However, I also feel that's just part due to the restraint of time for how much they were pushing out new stuff and touring at the time. It wasn't much later after that they were going to go on tour while opening for Red Hot Chili Peppers. They had a busy, busy time in the 2000s, the mid and late 2000s. So, I'm going to make a poll for this one. This one's a little bit different. Dun, 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 dun. Go to my poll. Like, make it. Amputecture. Gold, silver, bronze, aluminum. You only get four options, and I'm not really considering anything trash right now. Vote on Amputecture if you'd like. I know what I said. I have my notes, and I'll show you my notes, too. Even if you guys vary away from mine, I'll listen to some of the argument on this one, too. I know what I'm saying, but this one is a little bit harder of an argument because this is a wildly talented and skillful played album that gets loud and noisy and by intention that's very different than the first two. <sighs> the time crunch on Amputecture was the entire appeal of it. Fair. And think how much they accomplished in that time crunch. An album like this that would take other bands years to try to figure out. Day of the Baphomets and Viscera Eyes alone. Tetra Gamatron, which would not even be possible. And Cedric and Omar were just sneezing this out and making it work. Vicarious Atonement. Talk about a sinister creepy way to open an album that still is really good with piano parts too there's a lot a few more seconds on the poll i gotta see who's zooming in and out i believe two of the cats in the household are having an intense game of tag right now and that's fine dun, 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 dun. okay let's check it out a strong showing this wins its silver, 57%, gold, 35%, bronze, 7%. By the way, I had silver on this also. And silver's great, by the way. Don't get it wrong. I would kill to have a silver album. So, you know, I think that's very fair. <coughs> Chester? Chester, are you trying to cause shenanigans? Because it sure looks like it. Chester the cat. In for the Mars Volta discussion, apparently. We now go to 2008. More touring. More speculation of songs and music. More wild chaos. We now get the Mars Volta with the Bedlam and Goliath. We get Wax. And we get all these other songs. We get Metatron. Which forever will be embedded in my head as another great biblical thing. We get so, so much to work with. 
I feel like the title track Goliath, I remember hearing Metatron, I remember hearing Wax, and I just loving, loving, loving it. And it felt like this was more polished, more focused, less, um, <laughs> not drug-induced, but less completely drugged out imagery, just trying to put to music. This album was great. And this album is much, much, this is probably albums probably as accessible to a new listener as D. Laus, in my opinion. And keep in mind, that was five years removed from T. Laus. This was 2008. This is where the Mars Volta actually played on David Letterman. Boy, did that freak the audience out. This is where the band started swelling and bringing in more members to play live. This was an eight piece at the point. The saxophone player was live, breaking it down. Bedlam and Goliath is fantastic. This album was amazing. I know. There's just so much for it. And I remember seeing that David Letterman performance and I hearing Cedric going as high as his voice could the entire three minutes. My favorite story about this album revolves around that performance because years before that, at the drive-in, was supposed to play with Dave on Late Night with David Letterman before for One Arm Scissor. David Letterman hated it. He hated the sound. He literally told Cedric, don't quit your day job. Eight, nine years later, <laughs> he's back and he sang that high just to annoy David Letterman. That is fantastic. So fantastic that the song Wax Simiacra, which is always very fun to pronounce, won a Grammy for Best Hard Rock Performance, beating out names like Ozzy Osbourne. That's impressive. Unexpected, too. Much like Amputexture, this album had soaring heights and crater lows again. There were odd lows, Tourniquet Man and things like that. But the highs felt so much higher and cleaner than also it was more accessible as to where Amputexture was for the fans and the diehards of this. But at the same time, Bedlam and Goliath was much more accessible to the public. You could hear a song like Wax on the radio. If I'm correct, they tried to do snippets of Goliath also, and it worked. There was good stuff on this album, good closing moments, the closing track, everything opening up. Metatron, the whole story, working with the biblical references also. It's so great how much they did with this. <laughs> Are the spirits going to go after you? Yeah, pretty much. This is also where the Mars Volta became such a big force that they were becoming a part of pop culture. If you ever seen the movie Get Him to the Greek, they were mentioned in a throwout joke. They were mentioned in other throwout jokes. There's a uh, gif, jif, whatever, of Jonah Hill talking about the Mars Volta. And it, it's such a wild, chaotic thing to describe to people. But once you see eight people on stage, sometimes dressed up really nice, losing their minds in jam session performances, it's pretty impressive. Tourniquet Man, yeah, Tourniquet is a different one as my mother heard that song on the uh, while I was playing it in the car. I don't remember where we were driving. And I was in college at that point. And she goes, wow, the aliens have landed. Ugh. The music video is hilariously low budget too. The music video for... Um, Wax, I believe, was just like found footage from their Australia tour. The music video, though, for Goliath is like in a parking lot and Cedric just puts on a costume and that's it. And it's great. Like, it's really fun. So they didn't care. This is the one that won a Grammy. It sold great. They were still riding high that momentum. Boy, oh boy, the Mars Volta, four albums in. And they were the unclassifiable undescribable band in hard rock that people loved to talk about without being able to describe or compare them to other groups. Huh. You could tell they were having fun with the videos. Yeah, for sure. The element of a man shout. The music video is worth watching for Goliath. I would show you, but again, YouTube would flag everything because of course they would. So as we go here, Someone, some people are trying to make weird random puns and jokes in the chat. Hilarious. I don't even get it. I like when people try to be funny in the chat and no one knows what they're talking about. 
Oh, embarrassing. The poll for the Battle of Goliath is going to be interesting. I know what I said. I have my notes right here. Because this is a different sounding album completely and easier to digest than Amputexture, but still way different than Francis the Mute and even different than D-Louse in tone and style as well. Da -da -da -da. Gold, silver, bronze. Da -da. Go ahead, get your votes in for the Bedlam and Goliath. I want to see what you all say before I say what I said. Where I ranked it. The storytelling was becoming not as involved and wildly dark though it still gets pretty dark there's fun to be had on an album like this too where Amputexture was could be very dark and sinister in tone the Bedlam and goliath was had its dark moments but there's still so much more celebration about it so yeah <laughs> give you a few more seconds on the poll i know what i would say Hmm. Major complaint was that the first album of theirs where sometimes couldn't tell some of the songs apart. It gets like that in some sections, but at the same time, the recording and processing of it was meant by that by design. I think the flow of this album also works well. It's not perfect, but some of the songs are so good, I'd still give it gold. I'm kind of the same about that too. I understand that. There are some of the best best Mars Volta songs on Battle and Goliath. I stand by that. So. To the poll. Let's see what you guys got. Gold at 45%. That's about right. Where'd it go? The poll just disappeared. So the poll just disappeared apparently, but it did say gold at 45%, I believe silver at 41%. I was teetering on that high silver, low gold as well. And I have no problem giving this gold. So. Bedlam is really great, but honestly, almost too crazy and frantic too often. It never gives you room to breathe. I do feel it gives you enough room to, just enough room to breathe, even though it can be frantic. Amputexture was the one where you don't get room to process, let alone breathe. And I think, again, this is a much more accessible because of that. The songs are not as monstrous as at points that's just one opinion though and that's what i miss from some of the moments in d loused because where you'll have something like cicatriz and um wow roulette dares my mind's going already you'll still have moments to take everything in songs <laughs> songs like metatron no you buckle up you're sitting in for a long ride it's worth it but man so much happens so i say this gets gold too and I get the argument for silver, too. I was in that between area. So now we get to the odd discussion. Octahedron is arguably the most disappointing album for the Mars Volta fans at that time. And I say that as someone who got it the day it came out in 2009. It was not what I was expecting. And it's not without merit, either. There are songs that work. With Twilight as my guide, I still feel... Is a great song. And there are great moments on this album. And someone just brought up too. This is where members started going in and out. It was understandable. The change of drummers felt. Pridgen overplays a lot. But the music in it is pure gold. The thing is. This was the most different. Biggest shift in tone and change for the group. This is where the Mars Volta started relying so much more on. Slowing everything down. More acoustics. More soft moments, making this more of a dreamscape, making this more of an acoustic pop album, as some people called it. There is a lot of beautiful arrangements on here, a lot of well-executed, well-crafted performances. It is not what the Mars Volta fans were expecting and wanted at the time. And I think that's why it's not talked about nearly as much. It was not well received by the fan base. And also, it did not do nearly as well publicly or praise-wise, just in popular speech and just getting popular as it was, as the previous albums. Especially coming after the heels of a Grammy win, television performances, and all the great touring that Bedlam and Goliath brought. 
At first, all I thought Octavian was solid, but the more I listened to it, the more I appreciate its brilliant moments. Since we've been wrong, may just be their best slow burn IMO. And that was the single when we since we've been wrong, which is great. It does have that little flare up at the end. The two songs that I stand by, since we've been wrong and with Twilight as my guide, are worth seeking out. There aren't as many moments worth seeking out, though. This is also, and you guys have noticed by doing the polls by now, I am not putting any trash option for any of these albums. I do not think the Mars Volta ever made a trash album. Not even close, actually. I do feel this is far from gold, though. And the reason why is because there's so much on this album that is so slow, it's to the point where you question if this even is the Mars Volta still playing. Omar is focusing on something so different in style and tone that he's used to and he's known for that you it loses a lot of the identity of being the Mars Volta. I like it now, but I never loved it back then and I still don't love it now. And that's weird coming from a diehard the Mars Volta fan. It's hard to really grasp where to put an album like this. The high points are so softer and fleeting but the low points are long valleys where it's really hard to focus and to take it all in and that's what i really feel is the biggest drawback for something like octahedron keep in mind this was still pretty quick turnaround time this was 2009 it was roughly a year and a half maybe a little bit less than that maybe a little more than that after 2008 it's bedlam and goliath again fast turnaround time Saying Mars Volta in any way is trash is heresy. I agree. I get that people don't understand it or it's not their thing, but even I have never heard anyone ever say that Mars Volta is bad or trash. Even the people who can't stand it or just don't get it, don't criticize it or say it's bad. And that's a good compliment to have. You can have music that's not for everybody, but you get, it's, it's a big compliment to say, I can still respect that talent and know why people love it. So... That's where a lot of discussion now goes for Octahedron for a big old shift in sound and style. I remember listening to it and trying to give it so many chances back in 2009. I remember coming back to it years later, still not really loving it. Which Mars Volta albums do you have on vinyl? Yeah, I have them all on vinyl and the first six on CD. And oddly, one on cassettes because it was a gift. The band needed to calm down after Goliath. Understandable. Keep in mind how much has happened since 2003. And I'm going to make a bigger point of that after this too, after the next album. Uh, it's like Tourniquet, but for their entire discography. Uh, or for the entire album, I don't know. I want to appreciate this album more. I want to like this album more. I just physically cannot. And mentally cannot do it. Because of so many dry points not quiet or soft points because quiet and soft music has a great purpose but there's so much in here that just doesn't have any type of emotion and that's what got to me again coming from a diehard the mars volta half fan i have the hoodie on right now you can just barely see it Ta -da. i'm gonna make the poll for those of you who know this album dun, 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 dun. where's my mouse where's my cursor Start a poll. Gold. Silver. I have to do this every time, unfortunately. Aluminum. Poll is open for octahedron. I'm curious what you guys are going to say. I have my notes here. I'm between two categories myself. This is the point where I start getting thirsty. Just a second while you guys are voting. There we go. In that sense, Turnico was like the most laid-back track on Bedlam and Goliath. I get it. It is fairly short from what I remember. Yes, Octahedra. Well, it's not that it's super short, but it's much shorter than the Gargantuan albums that came before it, like Francis. So, take that for what it's worth. 
when they dissolve the band, give us time to really enjoy this and Nocturnicate. Yeah, and I'll get to that when we get to Nocturnicate. Desperate Graves is also wildly underrated. Sure. My opinion always changes for each album. A lot of people have that with this as well. The Mars Vault is one where your opinion is going to change on album order and rank, which I think I could do the tier list discovery for this one just because of that. Because it's a little bit easier to digest. Let's check the poll. Dun, 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 dun. See, this is interesting. I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds. Poll's not opening for me yet. That's why I'm kind of stalling. Because I do not think this is gold. To be honest, I don't even think it's silver. It's hard to say. This album and Goliath could have shared some songs with each other to even out the levels of intensity. Maybe? <sighs> the thing is, though, songs like here put on Battle of Goliath, I think would have completely distracted from what was going on in Goliath. And, also, and vice versa, too. One song for Battle of Goliath would have completely disrupted and stood out in a weird way on Octahedron. I don't know. That's just me. Dun, 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 dun. As we get ready. A few more seconds. I think I got to figure it out now. The, the little poll thing was like glitching out on me. So I'm trying to figure it out now. A few more. It won't let me vote either, by the way, because I'm the one that made the poll, which is obvious. And... I'd go with bronze, but it's but I love with it more and more with each listen as the years go on. A lot of you like this more than I did. Silver, 44%. Bronze, 40%. Gold, 10%. Aluminum, 5%. See, I had this at bronze. Hard, steady bronze on my notes. And I'm thinking of putting it bronze just because I think my vote would have actually even tied it out to silver. It's always about sweet albums, depending on how much I mercy tired myself other ones. I think that's everyone in middle school. Bronze with each list of the years go on. Goliath is too highly conceptual just to add tracks. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with bronze because my tie would have voted it out. The people that voted for 20 votes. If it would have been 21, the math would have made a tie for silver. So. I know you guys are probably thinking, well, what the heck did we vote for? Because I wanted to see where it was. And I didn't think, I was thinking more people were actually going to say it was worse than bronze. I'm glad you guys do appreciate this album a lot more. Time maybe has been more kind to it in retrospect. It came late, late the stream. I to see D. Laos above Francis, and I already feel like Childish Gambino coming with pieces to the fire community. No, Lost Rock said no. It's just gold. They're not above each other. It's just gold tier is gold tier. They're in order. We do a chronological order. That's why they're in that ranking. So your panic is not warranted. Just eat your pizza. <laughs> a generous silver. It's high bronze to low silver. Fair enough. A generous silver, which is also polite. Yeah, I can't give silver because there aren't enough moments and it just doesn't feel like an album as m expressive and as much put into as the previous albums. As much time invested. So, which is a fair point. As we move on, we have two left. And this is where I want to make a big point. This is probably the most divisive album in the entire of the Mars Volta discography. It also doesn't help that for a long time this was the final the Mars Volta discography because the band broke up roughly a week before the album came out. It was back in 2012. The Mars Volta had taken too much time. They were beyond burnt out. The six albums that we just discussed all came in under 10 years, roughly nine years. Think about all the albums, the live album, the EP, endless touring that they did in nine years to get that big. And it's so much to take in. Some people despised this album. They didn't understand it. Some people said this was really solid and a good way to go out on, like a good closing note. And before it came out, yeah, I, they were that burnt out and strung out. And I kind of get it. So, we get to songs on Nocturnicate that people either completely skipped and ignored or fell in love with. And that's how I am with every other song, almost. Every vessel, uh, Empty Vessels Make the Loudest Noise, The Malk and Jewel, are two notable ones. Zed in Two Knots is one of the best 
album closers I can think of, and also just ending points at the time for the Mars Volta at their at the time discography. Hearing Cedric shout St. Christopher always stuck with me for whatever reason. And there was a lot of, uh, it's like someone just said, a strange mix. They were doing a lot more experimentation stuff on this, but there was still a lot more personality, I felt, than Octahedron. This is a sampling of songs. This is by far the most underrated album of the band. I was like, ages, sure. With Nocturnicate, it doesn't feel like an even album. It's uneven because of all the songs, and that's fine. But I still enjoy it for what it is. Knowing that the band was that fried after a nine-year sprint, not a nine-year run, but a nine-year sprint where no one was resting, it was always living on the road, recording and writing in buses, trying to make new music, pushing it out, playing bigger and bigger shows, opening for bigger bands, then headlining their own shows. It just, it kept going. And it's hard to keep creating music and give fans what they expect when you're all, when you yourself don't know what you want to make next. Empty Vessel is one of your favorite TMV tracks, mine too. And I stand by Zed and Two Knots is such a fun way to close an album, like a closing exclamation point that really makes you feel like you listen to something epic and something big. Absentia, the second half of the song, it's honestly the album highlight, fair enough. As everyone I think is saying, there are big highlights on this album, but there are absolutely skippable moments. And that's fair. That's so think about any great albums people listen to that have that exact description. It's just the fact that this has such a, an infamous story behind it and such a bad connotation with it being the end of the Mars Volta at the time in 2012. I've been listening to more since they reunited. I think a lot of people have. A lot of people did the big discography. I have it on vinyl. When I listened to it on vinyl, I heard so much more of a rich, thorough production that I did not remember hearing when it came out. This album is fun in the right moments and confusing at the right moments, but also just there it exists. That's why it's so hard to really grasp and get a put a get a good foothold on. This is not the album to like do for an introduction. Like if you've never heard the Mars Volta, you would not start with Nocturnicate by a long shot. However, if you even are familiar with Nocturnicate or familiar with the Mars Volta, you can listen to songs of Nocturnicate and be fine. It's that weird kind of gray area. Close out this gray, almost so poetic, at least in terms of the sonic quality of it. I agree. The fact that they made as many albums in such a fairly short time is cr still crazy. It is, considering these were not simple albums to make. As the years went on, the band got bigger with more musicians and more involved. So, And that was definitely shown on Nocturnicate. And this was the last album for Ike, too. Absolutely. MP3 does not make justice of these albums. It doesn't. Even the, even the early ones. Even D. Laos and Francis. It does not. So. Nocturnicate I have on my notes. I'll say what I have after you guys vote. I don't want to sway the vote. It's such a unique entry for the band. And again, it is by far the most polarizing album. But I think part of that is because it was the end for so long. For a band that many people depended on and went to. So, knock. This is a fun word to spell. Apologize for spelling up if I get it wrong. Da -da -da -da. Gold, silver, bronze, al aluminum. Here we go. Get your votes in. I'm curious. It's worth it. They are releasing the separate albums on vinyl now. Start with Deloused. From the bottom of my heart, start with Deloused. Do not start with Nocturnicate, even though I have my opinions on it too. Have you got the Deloused demo on Battle 2? I do. Um, landscape, whatever it is. Yeah, it's my collector's edition. I'll show it to, I'll show it off in a second. I have Realidad de los Suenos. So, I got it. Landscape tantrums, if that's correct. Again, a lot of the names of the Mars Volta you have to look at because you'll never remember them all. Haven't heard of it. It would be fair. Fair enough. It is... Um, Gersash, I apologize for pronunciation. Worth listening to in full, if you can. I know they're all on streaming services now. It is worth it because the hype moments are so good. Balcon Jewel, Every Empty Vessels, Zed and Two Knots. Those are my favorites. Is Francis a double vinyl? It's a triple. It's a three. And it's awesome. 
John Theodore's run with the first two albums, loved it. Fantastic. John Theodore's great. As I'm looking and I'm waiting. A few more seconds. One of my favorite albums, very nice. Landscape Tantrums, which is the demo for what we would hear on D-Louse. Think D-Louse songs, but more stripped down a little bit. It's just X. Ah, okay, we'll call you X. There you go. Gershok. I'm terrible with pronunciations on other languages. I apologize. I'm working on it. Try to study French. And we got a tie. Silver and bronze, 33%. I'm glad that you guys are being very generous to a band. And like, this is an album that definitely work, is worth a second look. So, seal for record store day. Oh yeah, that and the Widow Live. I had it on CD years ago. I had this at bronze. So I'm going to go with bronze on this as well. Because I don't think it's as memorable or as many high points as something like Amputexture, but I would put it above Octahedron. Let's put it that way. I do think this is better than Octahedron. However, at the same time, I can't say much more than that. So, we go here. And then there was one. A long gap of time went by where there was zero the Mars Volta discussion. Cedric and Omar were doing Antimask. They had the At the Drive-In reunion in 2016, which was great. Inter Alia was a lot of fun. They had an EP after that. They had a big old tour. They were at the Drive-In and had their big run for about two and a half years for their reunion run. And they loved it. Cedric and Omar started doing other stuff. Had fun. It was nice. First time. Cool chat. Schedule. We, this is mainly a YouTube video show, but I do live streams every now and then with the Rock Coliseum and stuff like this. First time I've done one for a tier list. If this works well, I'll do one for Metallica in April when the new album comes out. I have everything on CD, yeah. CD, what size is a nightmare? Oh yeah, to make a replica, yeah. So last year, when we started getting wind and cryptic teasers and pop-up boxes for a self-titled album, I speak for many other the Mars Volta hands when we said we didn't believe it. I didn't. But then we started getting hints of everything and hearing little clips and people flying out to hear the music in that box in that chamber and saying, yeah, it's real. That's when we knew. We got many movies. Want to talk about Octra being a departure from the Mars Volta sound? This one really takes the cake. It does. But I'm going to get to that point. We heard Black Light Shine. We heard Great Yard, we heard Great Yard Love, which is my favorite off the album, by the way. I love that song so, so much. This is where we heard the Mars Volta mature after being away for 10 years and doing so much. We have to remember, Cedric and Omar were not resting at home for a decade. They were still on the road. They were still playing and creating for different names and different groups. And then they came back and brought back the Mars Volta with a new lineup hyperventilated when you saw black light shine when i first it was like in one of the uh groups for the mars volta online and i saw the people like actually proving it and saying they saw it yeah yeah it's real I'm like oh my gosh it is real i remember playing the singles on new music night on our uh live streams over on the other website that i'm not allowed to say on youtube that we have every sunday by the way wink that I knew this was going to be fun, but it was going to be very different. It's not going to be like Octahedron, but it's definitely going to be something different for the Mars Volta. And it is. This is a much more smoother, almost lounge style album for the Mars Volta. For a band that used to be the most chaotic and just boastfully loud group you can ever understand. You can ever see or hear. That was the first time you got to see the Mars Volta live. Vigil is the best song for this album. Vigil's great. I still feel the Mills Volta just 10 years later. And that's a great point. This still felt in every way like the Mars Volta, but it's 10 years added on to a wild discography. Cedric and Omar were not spring chickens when Nocturnic had came out in the first place. This is them and what they wanted to make the Mars Volta now. I enjoyed this album quite a bit. And a lot of people were turned away because, again, no one knew what to expect. And as it's the Mars Volta, we already knew that going in. 
like a logical progression of Nocturnicate, understandable. The Mars Volta win Arctic Monkeys, I wouldn't say that. Do you think we'll get something Metallica? Maybe, I don't know. The Mars Volta self-titled album is more like, uh, where is the Mars Volta now? Where is the music that we want to play now? How do we want to make and perform music in our own way? We still have our culture and our style of music very, very deeply buried into the roots of every song, but we don't want to be as angry and loud and chaotic and as biblically apocalyptic as before. This is an album where you sit down, if you put your big, nice headphones on, and you just let it play. It's not the one where you blast in your car going 90 down the highway or play for a big group of people and just loudly ram into each other. Art pop, indie electronica. Indie electronic, indie, indie electronica. Yeah. <clears throat> Honestly, that might be the best way to say it because the electronic elements on this album work well. I've heard a lot of people argue about the mixing and production levels. I thought that was fine too. This album works. The lyrics are well done too. This was a well thought out album. It's not my favorite. I don't even think it's gold, but I still put a lot of credit on an album like this, especially when nobody expected it. No one knew what to expect or consider for it either. Even when La Realidad de los Suenos came out, no one knew or thought the Mars Volta was coming out with a new album. We just wanted the old stuff in a nice shiny box package. So, that being said, I have on my list what I put. Last poll for the evening. Dun, 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 dun. That's not the right one. Poll. Gold. Silver. I'm not making a trash option for this one either. Which one do you think? Get your votes in. Agree with what you say about the earlier. It's there is that link between 2012 Mars Volta and 22 Mars Volta. Kind of. Just a second. One of the best gifts I ever received, ever, 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 in my life was a gift for being a fan. While you guys vote. La Realidad de los Suenos. The discography before this self-title came out. All in its amazing artwork and box. With all the vinyls, including the demo album and things like that. With album artwork and many other things, including this. It sounds amazing on vinyl, too. All of them do. That was a fun two weeks playing these nonstop on the record player. Let's see what you guys thought. It's like the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Except I don't die when I open it up. There isn't a bad Mars Volta album because they've never tried something for an entire album that didn't work. That's a good way to say that. Always been quality moments. So we'd say appreciate the album has made it easier if you start with the members' side projects going into it. Not easier, no. And sometimes it does help if you understand at the drive-in beforehand. But honestly, start with D-Loust and go to Francis the Mute after that. If you really want the true way, the best way to jump into at, uh, the Mars Volta, start with D-Loust. That is the best way to get a best introduction from this band and see what it's all about from the music side. Say I can't afford that, but I didn't manage to get the demo for a cheap price. Oh yeah, I would. there's no way I would have been, been able to pay for this at the time. None. I didn't even try. It was sent to me as a gift by the record label and the publicist because they knew I was such a big fan. Like I said... One of the coolest things I've ever been given as a gift. Let's check the poll. Never sat down and even listened to the Mars Volta. This video has inspired me to give him a chance. Blink PS2. Start with D-Loust. And set aside time. 
at least through your first sitting, get through the first three tracks. It's worth it. Da, 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 da. You guys are pretty close to what I said too, because I was teetering between silver and bronze. Silver, 50%, bronze, 34%, gold, 7%, aluminum, 7%. I will not argue this time. I know I fluctuated the argument for octahedron. I will not pull away my vote and try to make my vote count for more because if I voted, it still would not have bumped silver down. So I'll put it in silver. I'll let you guys take this one on that. So this is where we stand. And now I got to do this thing and see if I can get this right. Bam. There we go. I wanted to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to try to make a screenshot of this later. If you have any super chats also, I didn't see any come yet, but if you do, I'll read them at the end. The biggest thing about this, I meant more about starting with the side projects to bridge the gap for the hiatus. Eh, not particularly. I've heard all but Nocturnicat. Okay, I would finish Nocturnicat first, then go to the other side stuff. This band has meant a lot to me as someone who was not able to explain or share their love for a band when I was in college, when some of these albums were coming out, the later albums were coming out and things like that. The live EP and scab dates are both fantastic as well. The tremulant EP, which predates e Laos, is fun as well. Self-titled over Okta feels wrong to me, but I'm not mad at it. Tearless is fair. Scab dates also has the best version of Concertina. Concertina is a great track from tremulant as well. Seven albums, six of which came out in a nine-year span, and this reunion album, or return album, I guess you say not reunion. The Mars Volta is still going live this year. They'll be opening some dates for Red Hot Chili Peppers. They'll be doing some dates in the States as headliners. They'll be going overseas as well. See them live if you can. Watch live footage if you can. At the very least, I would hope this gives some of you who are not super familiar with the Mars Volta a little bit of a direction where to start and to see what is the best that would be my opinion on what to do hopefully some of you had a good enough discussion about this as well for to understand what some of the high points are if you click back on this video later and see what songs work for the mars volta and each album which ones didn't and i know not everyone's going to agree with the ranking as with the mars volta everyone has different albums and different opinions i feel like what we have right here is pretty fair I can't really argue with anything on this here. To read some of this, no way this album is better than Nocturnicate. Once you go through the studio albums, listen to the live EP and Scab Dates, they're great. Self-titled over Okta. Scab Dates also has the best version. Tremula feels like a bridge between d and At The Drive-In almost. Maybe a little, just because of the timing. Muscles was my intro to post-hardcore. Interesting. Disagree with Amputexture and Silver instead of Gold. Fair. And I get that. Honestly, you should go just go chronologically. What do you... Oh, for like, for to be able to get in. I get it. And no matter how you do it, I recommend everyone start with D-Loust. Start with D-Loust. That is the best way. My feeling when the gold album isn't on gold. <laughs> I'd bump Amputexture to gold, Octahedron to silver, and Nocturna to silver. Fair enough. Again, I can't... I'm not going to argue individual personal feelings on any of these albums because I get it. I really do. At the Drive and Relationship would also work as a good start to the Mars Volta. No, because at the drive-ins, Relationship Command is still a very different entity and beast from what d Laust is. Just my opinion. Album artwork for the Mars Volta is incredible. Yes, it is. Very unique and inspired as well. That Francis the Mute cover is iconic still to me with the hooded driver, the mask driver. So, I think that should do it for us for right about now. Thank you for this hour-long discussion about the Mars Volta. Hopefully you all found some enjoyment out of it as I switch over. Thank you guys again. For a heads up, we do new music nights every night on that other website that I talk about all the time on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's where we played some of the new Mars Volta singles when they dropped. My socials are all over if you want to find that link. That's usually in the description as well. Next week, I'll have my next list video and it will be a ranked one. The top 10 best debut albums in rock. I'm working on it a little bit more because it's a sponsored video. And this is a ranked video, so I will have number 10, number 9, number 8 actually count down. And I'm hoping that one does well. I have other things coming out as well. Album reviews, shorts, things like that. Follow the socials. It does help a ton. 
Thank you guys for checking this out. I understand the Mars Volta is not the biggest name to do something like this, but I'm glad I wanted to test out this idea to see if this would work on YouTube because I've never done a live stream with this for a discography tier list before. I've done many live streams with Rock Coliseum and solo stuff as well, but I've never done like this. So I'm thankful that we were able to test this one out and the Mars Volta was the perfect choice for it. If this works out well and it does decent enough on views, and I know it's a different thing for live streams, we'll do one for Metallica in April before 72 Seasons comes out. So, that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you all have a fantastic evening. I hope you all tune in on Sunday for New Music Night. I'm going to have a great week. I'll be traveling a little bit, but I'll still have content out for you. Thank you guys again. I don't have any cats with me right now or else I'd show them to you because I know you guys care more about that than me. Thank you guys again. Keep the discussion going in the comments section. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the final ranking. I'll show it to you one more time. Get your screenshots of that. Share it around. I know on Reddit and Facebook, there are the Mars Volta groups that are very active that would probably want to see something like this. So please share that out too. Let me guys know. Let me know. Just keep the discussion going. Keep up the discussion about the Mars Volta because there's a lot to talk about. Thank you guys again. Have a great night. See you Sunday for New Music Night on the other website. Until then, stay tuned. Please hit the like button on your way out because it does help a ton if you hit the like button. And subscribe if you haven't. Hopefully you have already. Take care, guys.